working on this version where I'm using different colored threads, I wanted to show you how I like to do these legs, which these legs are, I'm going to do in a satin stitch, but I wanted to show you before I satin stitch, I'm just going to do a little back stitch and outline that. And this will give me a nice, a nice um, line to use when I'm doing my satin stitch. So for a back stitch, and I'm still not real proficient at this, so that's why I'm using a hoop because it does make my back stitches a little bit easier for me to get them straight. So for a back stitch, you're going to skip ahead. I go about an eighth of an inch. And then you're going to take your needle back in that same hole as the previous stitch right there. So skip ahead about an eighth of an inch. These might be a little smaller actually. And these will be covered up. So they could be a little bit bigger. And once you get really good at it, you don't have to do the poke and pull. You can just come up, just run your needle from one stitch to the next. The nice thing too about doing a back stitch, when you come to a corner, all you're doing is just um, going back. You don't have to like secure your corner or anything. It actually makes a corner all on its own. You just end your stitch right where you want it to turn. So I will go ahead and finish up this guy. And this is what I was meaning by you can skip ahead. So see how my needle skips ahead. I can just take stitches like that too. That'll go a little bit faster. Oops, maybe. <laughs> and I know this is something that if I practiced, I would get much faster at it. But I tend to just use a stem stitch, so there we go. Okay, so now that we've got the outline of that leg done, now we can come in and do the satin stitch. So one thing you could do if you have a colored pencil or a felt pen that's about that color, you could color that in and then stitch over it. And that way, if your stitches don't match up exactly, you're not gonna see the fabric underneath. But I'm going to just do my best and do it without anything coloring in the background. So you just come up on one side of those stitches and then down on the other side. And I have learned that if I use a hoop, my satin stitches do look a lot better. But it is really helpful to have those back stitches kind of as a little, um, just kind of a guideline. And if you bring it up right on the side of it, and you could even pull it over just a little bit, it really makes it nice and, well, that one wasn't very straight, but so I'm going to sneak in here and I'm going to do one more in that little space there. Do whatever works for you. <laughs> and this is a really cool variegated thread too. So um, it, the leg will be different colors as it's going down to the hoof. So that's how you do a back stitch and a satin stitch. And that's the same thing that I did when I stitched this little ear. And the nice thing too about having the little back stitch around it is it kind of poofs it up a little bit. All right, I'll finish this up. So for this little guy's face, since I'm using this variegated thread, this is the bronze Baldani thread. I thought it'd be fun, kind of fun to do his face in a different part of the thread. You can see here on the legs, it goes from light all the way to this dark. And since this happened to turn out to be fairly light thread portion around his face, I'm gonna do his face in a little bit of a darker color or part of that same thread, just to make it pop a little bit. So I'm gonna do a stem stitch I'm going to start at one end and go about an eighth of an inch and then come up halfway in between 
and I'm going to carry my thread on the outside and then go an eighth of an inch and come back in that same hole that I just created. And you always want to be consistent with how you carry your thread. And what I wanted to show you here was kind of how I did the nose. So there's his nose right there. And I'm going to take a stitch back this way. I don't know if you can see, it's just a little, a little bend there. And bring my thread up. And I'm just going to tack that right on the other side of that thread. It's kind of like a little uh, fly stitch but that makes that nice little nose shape. And then start on the line to come down where his mouth is. And I'm gonna do kind of the same thing there where I'm going to tack that in place. So if you're going around a really tight curve like that, that's something you could do. Um, you could do a back stitch for this face because you can go around nice sharp corners with back stitches if you want. And the other thing while I'm here, I want to show you the eye is just a simple straight stitch at an angle, just like that. I probably should have finished the, his jaw before I popped up there for his eye, but, and this little chin part, I'm going to do the same way as I did above there. I'm gonna just tack it in place. Whoop, got a little knot. There we go. And that's how easy the face is. And I didn't even use really the darkest part of the thread, but it still is just enough different from the portion that goes around his face to make it stand out just a little bit. So stitching up these little flowers, all I did was just a very simple straight stitch. So I'm going to start out on one end. I kind of drew an outline of it rather than each individual stitch and go back to the base. And what I would recommend is doing this before you do the green. And that way that green satin stitch like that can cover up the edges of those red petals. So these don't have to be perfect, just Kind of some at an angle, some straight, some longer, some shorter, just like in nature. So that's how fast and simple that is for the little bud. And I'm going to tie a knot. I like to tie a knot down by the base and then tie a knot a little bit up, about a quarter of an inch. Take my scissors and cut in between and now I'm ready to go with a knot on my thread. Okay, so for this guy, I was originally in the plan going to fill that in with a satin stitch, but um, I kind of like the way it just, it stands, it just pops out on its own once you just do the outline of the these little petals. So this is the same thing. You go from the outside to the inside and you just continue all the way around until you have your little flower. You don't wanna do them too close together because then it's just gonna fill in kind of like a satin stitch. So you do wanna leave a little bit of space so you can see the fabric underneath. And I'll finish that guy up. And here's another thing where it's really kind of cool to use different parts of the thread. Like down here is a really dark part of the thread. And then when I started again I used some lighter right next to it and now I'm going back to the darker so that it isn't just dark on this end and then light on this end. Kind of think about it as you're stitching where you want to use those different parts of the thread. So when you're doing a, I call it a stem fill because I'm filling that area in with a stem. I want to carry the thread so that it will go lay against the, the um, the line of stitching that's already there. So it's just a matter of taking a few stitches this way. And then I turn my fabric around 
and I get going the other direction. Oop, I pulled it up through the same hole. That doesn't work. So that's one way you can fill these in. And then I'll also show you how I filled in on the other one, which was all just uh, one color of thread. In that one, I wove the stitches, which was kind of fun and easy to do, and made kind of a little plaid look. So that is how you do a stem fill. You could always satin stitch it if you want, but it's kind of a big area, so I decided it might need something a little bit with a tighter stitch so that it didn't get snagged or anything. So you can already see how fast that fills in. The very end where it's too pointy, then it just basically turns into a little satin stitch there. The little leaves on this one I did with a fish bone, and again, I'm gonna use a hoop. And that way I can take a nice long stitch and it isn't going to pucker or gather the fabric up. So I'm going to make, take, make a stitch right down the center from the tip to the bottom and bring my needle up on the drawn line. I'm going to go down about a quarter of an inch and cross that center line and then go right up and come up on the drawn line on the other side of the center and bring my thread down across again. So we're doing a little X there over the center. And each time you're gonna come down a little bit lower in the center so that you can continue to make that V that goes down the center or that X. And you could also do the fan leaf if you want. That one's really easy, and um, you can look on some of the past videos to see how I did that. You can even just uh, stem stitch the outline of this if you want. You don't have to fill it in. That's the fun part of these. I want you to just do what you like to do and what's fun, and because this is supposed to be about um, having fun and enjoying the process and not getting stressed out about having perfect stitches or anything like that. So. There is a fishbone leaf. And these little guys here, I did the same thing that I did on the legs, like this. So I did a little back stitch around there and then I just started going back and forth and filled it in with a satin stitch. And again, if you don't like the satin stitch, you could just do an outline there. Um, since it's so tight, you'd have to use really, really small stem stitches or you could use a back stitch too. That's always good for a uh, tight, detailed work. On the little bell, the little part that uh, is the dangly part is going to be a French knot. So I'm going to bring my thread up right on the dot and I'm gonna wrap my thread around the needle three times and put the needle down really close to where I brought it up slide those wraps down to the fabric and I don't want them to be too tight because I have to pull my needle through but I do want them to be snug. I'm holding it in place with my finger and thumb like that. So he's a little off center there. We'll move him over. So on this one you can see it a little bit better maybe because I've used a darker color. So that's his little bell. And on this one I used all one color, but again, it's a beautiful fall Donnie that's variegated, so it does have some texture to it just because of the changing of the colors. You can see it really clearly here on this one. All right. So on this sample, you can see that I filled these quilt block squares in just a little bit different. I did a little woven stitch, so I did horizontal stitches and then I did vertical stitches and wove them up and down through the other stitches. So basically what I did is I outlined it just like I did here with the stem stitch and then I went directly across 
and I spaced them about an eighth of an inch apart or closer, just depending on how thick or how tight of a weave you want your little basket weave to have. So these are a little bit farther apart than the other ones that I did, but this might be easier so you could see how I'm gonna to um, weave it. So now I'm gonna go, oh, I just took my stitch up. Okay, so now I'm going to go the other direction and I'm actually going to weave my needle. So I'll go over that thread, under, over, under, like that. And then just put the needle down. Where's my thread? There it is. And I'm gonna skip down here and we'll do the opposite. So I went under this one before and I'm gonna go over it and then under. So just your basic little weaving design and you can move those around with your needle to get them straight. So that's another fun way to just fill that area in. It almost looks like it could be fabric for a quilt. So this one you can see is much less filled in than this one where I did it a little bit tighter of a weave. When you do his little collar that the bell hangs off of, if you look here, I did this little yellow stitch from the bell over the red of the collar. So it looks like it's hanging on there. And then when you get up to the top, we're gonna do a little bow. And I do that by making a couple of lazy daisy stitches. So I bring my needle up right where it meets the, the sheep and I take the needle back down in that same hole. And then I bring it up at the tip of the little loop for the tie and carry my thread under the needle and tack it in place. If you pull that really tight, then that loop is gonna close up and we want it to look like a, a little loop, like it's tied. So we don't wanna pull it too tight. And then same thing on this side, pull the needle up, take the needle down in the same hole, come up, it's about a quarter of an inch. The thread goes under the needle and there's the second little tie. And then the ends of the ties, since they're so short, I'm just going to do a couple of straight stitches. So I'm gonna start at one end and then bring the needle down and move the needle over just a little bit and then I'm going to make the other end of the tie. Oop. Fix my bow, there we go. And that is how you do a little bow tie at the top of his little collar there or the chain that holds his bell. So now we have a finished one using one color of thread with the woven. And the other difference on this one is that I filled in his legs using a stem stitch. So stem stitch down, up, down, up, down, up, touching each other, just like I'm filling in over here on the quilt square. So pretty much the same couple of differences you can pick and choose which way you want to do it. And if you want to just outline the leaves, you can do that. You can just leave it outlined here. You don't need to fill that in. It's totally up to you. Do whatever makes you happy. So I'm going to sit here and enjoy stitching up the rest of this little guy. I hope you enjoy this month's design.